Hello and welcome to today's Hangout for Peace. Together with me today I have uh, Hezron and Gideon. Okay. The recent days have been uh, terrorizing for many Kenyans. But also internationally there has been a lot of evolving violence. As Kenyans we get frightened and angry when these things happen. The anger is a natural and automatic response when we hear about this. Uh, most of us have, have friends and families uh, affected in some way or another. And we are once again reminded of the dark months after the 2007 elections. Hezron, how do you personally react to this kind of violence? Can you say something about what is moving inside you? I can say it is uh, it's sadness because uh, it's bloodshed we're seeing out there. Mm -hmm. It's mass killings, it's, it's uh, people are being left without fathers, without mothers, without houses. It really moves me. I just feel very sad about it. I just feel that uh, the situation we have right now is not a good situation. And uh, what even pains me more is uh, it's not just an uh, accident happening because if, for example, we hear of a, a, a plane crash or maybe an, a car accident, then we understand because we, 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 we take it like, okay, it's, it, it happens anyway. But it makes me feel even uh, bad because I feel somebody out there is planning for this thing, sitting uh, down and planning sleepless nights to, to, to make sure that they, they kill mothers and fathers and things like this. So I really feel that it's a bad thing. I even feel sorry for the affected ones mm -hmm. because I just put myself in their shoes and I feel it's unbearable, it's unacceptable. It's very heavy to carry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kideon, you're a pastor. How do you uh, personally react to this uh, violence and how do you react as a pastor? Um, what is moving inside you? Well, before I am a pastor, I'm just an ordinary Kenyan, um, a human being. And like my brother said, I carry the same feelings. Uh, there is fear, there is hate, there is um, hopelessness, there is like desperation. Um, uh, there, is, um, there are questions like, when will this end? Um, who is next? Uh, where do they attack the next time? Uh, is it my place, my home, my village? All these questions are going within me. And like my brother is saying, um, this is planned, it's just not an accident. Um, we can call this fate. Th these are planned things. Um, there is that feeling like somebody should be responsible and they should be brought to book, they should be charged for this whoever that person is. This is my, my natural feeling and the questions I have within me. Do you feel that you, you would like to, to revenge this, these uh, killings? or? Uh, I personally, maybe not, but I feel like um, the uh, designated arms and departments of the government should be doing something and I'm really like eager mm. to see them do something. That, that is the feeling in me. Uh, revenge is not Christian. Uh, revenge is not biblical, but it's natural. And uh, in the arms of the government, there are those who are called to do it, uh, to, to execute justice where injustice uh, has been uh, done. Uh, as a Christian, I have the other pers perspective of um, forgiveness, uh, love for your neighbor and all this. And uh, even though this is not natural, uh, this is what I am commanded to do as a Christian. And I can uh, tell you that um, I struggle with this as well, just like another Christian does. Uh, love your enemy, uh, do good to your uh, neighbor who is your enemy. Uh, they killed my wife and children. I don't know how I would re react. It would be difficult maybe to forgive. And yet, this is what the Bible says I do. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's a really really strong and difficult thing. Uh, yeah. Um, Hezron, being a Christian, how does your faith uh, affect you in your decision making and thinking um, on on this matter, on these conflicts? Being a Christian, of of course, I'm a Christian, but I have uh, blood and flesh like uh, <laughs> everyone else, mm. and. Uh, I am a Christian and I'm uh, living uh, together with all the others who are not Christians, maybe, or uh, something like this. And uh, what I can say is being a Christian and the, 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 the foundations that I, I, I have as a Christian, I can say is just what is helping me or just giving me the, some inner strength. Because otherwise, then it's very, very difficult. Then I would say, as a Christian, uh, I am, uh, I am, I feel that I should uh, do what a, a Christian is supposed to do uh, in the biblical uh, perspective. What the Bible says about the Christian, and that is where I get uh, the strength or something to sustain me in mm. situations like this. Mm. Because then I would just be down, but. Being a Christian and the opinions that I have and the decisions that I make and the choices that I make towards what is happening, I know if I am a Christian, if I die, for example, it does not just end here. If, for example, I, I lose my people, uh, I have faith that I will meet them someday. Mm -hmm. So that's what gives me the, 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 the inner strength or the energies to move forward, to get stronger in this. But it's actually a challenge. It challenges me. And I'm always, always fighting with it. I am a Christian, yes, for quite a number of years now. But if things are happening like this, hopelessness is what I can see. Mm. There is no future. It's just, you don't know what happens next. It's really a struggle. But the foundations that I get from uh, the Bible, uh, the encouragements that I get from the books that I read, and for example, sometimes, seeing some references of what have happened and how people dealt with it, then it gives me energies to move forward. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what about you? Do you do you feel um, do you feel that you want to re revenge or you have a strong justice feeling inside you uh, that you want to, to to take the case in your own hands and and, and revenge the killings in some way? It's natural. If if bad things are happening to you, mm. it's very natural that you feel the one who is doing this should be dealt with accordingly. Mm. If uh, somebody breaks into your home and something like this happens, then you just feel they should, you should just get hold of these people. Mm. So I can say the revenge, I just feel, I just feel that those who are doing things like this should, just, should not be left scotch free. Mm. I feel that something should be done mm. because today it is here, tomorrow is the other day, tomorrow is in, I mean it's another place. Mm. So I feel that it should not be left like this. Mm. Something has to be done. Mm. Yes. Yeah. For myself, it is very difficult. If if my wife would be killed uh, by some planned um, uh, assassination, uh, yeah. assassination. <laughs> Uh, I would really have the feeling that I wanted to revenge, mm. uh, though I want to follow the biblical message. I mean, mm. I, I want to, mm. to, um, to do the right thing and, and live according to the Bible, mm -hmm. which is very difficult. What about you, uh, Gideon? Um, how does your faith um, af affect you in your decision making and thinking? You know, like all of you are saying, the natural thing to that comes is revenge, hatred, um, uh, call for action and all that. And uh, we can't avoid that when things happen, and especially when they happen to our closest uh, people and family members. Uh, but then the, the Bible is teaching us otherwise, that um, we love that enemy the one who killed your wife, the one who killed your, your child, you love them and uh, do good to them. 
And the, the issue of revenge, the Bible says, leave it to God. Of course, we start by leaving it, leaving it to the government uh, to, to do justice, because there is the law of the land. Anything beyond there, then we leave it to God. So what we're saying is that the revenge issue is not, as Christians, we are not going to take arms and go to the, the, the enemy's village and to burn their houses and uh, kill their people just to make sure that we equalize the, 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 the ju uh, justice or injustice for that matter. But, but we leave it to God and uh, he, he will take care of, of it. He is God Almighty. He can do much more even than, the, than our government can do. So um, Jesus is teaching us to love that enemy and leave things to, to God. Um, it, it's not easy. It's, and I think we all need the grace to, to love our enemies. We need that. I think uh, picturing it from the perspective of those who may have left, loved, uh, lost their, 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 their husbands, their, their children, I, I don't want to believe it's easy. I want to believe it's very difficult. But it's that difficult thing God is calling us to, to do. To, to forgive them, to, to, to live at peace with everyone, and especially as it is um, within our reach. Uh, do everything to, to, to bring reconciliation, to bring love, to, to show Christ's love even to the enemy. That, that is our calling. It's not easy, and I'm not just uh, trying to downplay the feelings of those who are may have lost their people. I'm very sorry and I feel for them. I wish I could do something, but, but maybe I can't. But my message to them would be, <sighs> leave it to God. And instead of hate and um, revenge, seek to, seek to, even though it's not easy, seek to love them. Seek to show them a different way of life. Like once was saying, you slapped, show the other cheek. Seek to show them that Christ loves you, God loves you, even though you killed my wife. Now, how this will happen and the possibilities of achieving this is, is God and it's the grace of God given to us. And I want to pray for them, just like I pray for myself, that God changes my attitude and my mindset, that, that I can start looking at that the enemy differently just like god saw me a sinner but he saw me and said i choose you i want to love you even though you are sin and i have never been any better i am still a sinner and god wants to extend that even to our enemies and to those who are messing up with the society the last question what can we do uh, to apply the biblical message about loving one's neighbor and uh, loving one's enemy. How, how do we apply this to, the, to this meaningless violence? Gideon has put it here very clearly that it is not easy, Ron. It's not easy because you have lost a loved one. It's not easy that you've lost property that you've uh, taken years to maybe to get. But I have chosen to be a Christian. I have chosen to be a follower of Christ. And if I have made that choice, then I have chosen to follow what Christ tells me to do. Mm. So that is what I can say. Because it is difficult, it is weighty, but I have made a choice mm. to follow Jesus. So I have chosen to follow what he tells me to do. Yeah. 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 One big problem with the revenge is that it never ends. So it goes like and um, once that starts, you never know where to stop. Because then, I remember when we were young boys, you slap one and he slaps you, and uh, you want to be the last one to slap. Then you are the hero, isn't it? You, If you are the last to be slapped, then you are the loser. And <coughs> this is very human. We want to do it, we want to be the last ones to strike before peace is done and things are settled. That is revenge, and if we 
choose that kind of line, line it will never end. Violence will still be there among his families, among his uh, tribes, among his nations. But uh, the, what God did is that he ended his violence, our violence and our enmity between him and uh, us by giving, by, by sacrificing his own son, Jesus Christ. And, and we can follow this example, saying, okay, to those who have lost their loved ones, those who have lost their wives or children, why don't you come up, be a, a role model, say, okay, the whole community is calling for revenge. I want to be different. I, I may not move the whole community to do what I want to do, but, but I want to act differently. I want to extend this kind of a godly... Um, uh, sacrifice to, to, to this enemy community and say, look, instead of revenge, I give you this. Uh, this is what I offer. Maybe it may be material, maybe something, but something that shows that you're different. You're not going for revenge. You're calling for something totally different. You're showing the love of God, the love of Christ for us and for the rest of the, the world. This is this would be my call. If I were in, in, in such a place, I would maybe pray that God will give me the grace to be the first one to do it. I don't know whether I'll manage, but this is maybe the way I look at it. Somebody has to start. Because if the, all of us in the community say, let's go revenge, then it will not stop. But if somebody says, okay, let's act differently let's let's be the losers let's agree that we are the last to be stricken let's 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 allow it to stop at that then maybe we are going somewhere and maybe there's hope for what whichever situation the two communities or the two nations or the two families in fight well thank you very much um our time is up um thank you for for coming and uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us, uh, watching this, this uh, Hangout for Peace. Uh, until next time, have a blessed time. Thank you.